I'm all right, guys. How's it going? So it sounds like this new sporting director, uh, the new candidate for sporting director has uh, accepted the job. Um, so there's been a bit of confusion over the last few days, you know, about what exactly his role would be at the club. And was it permanent? Was it temporary? Uh, you know, things like that. Um, very underwhelming appointment, I think, for most people. His CV is not exactly the best. And, you know, he's, he's, I think he's a bit of a character, as Rendon Rogers would say. I think he's got a reputation for rubbing people up the wrong way. Uh, but apparently that's his sense of humour. I mean, that was, that was one of the things one of the journalists said in an article about him, you know, bigging him up for the job. He's got, he's got a sense of humour, but he fucking needs to have, doesn't he, if he's going to work for uh, FSG. Um, he hasn't worked at a, a club as big as Liverpool. Uh, it, it, but I love you know he once signed Eric Meyer. So the guy can clearly see talent. So I have thoughts about this. I, I did a, a live stream on Sunday morning. Uh, and, we, you know, we, that stream was about him. Like talking about who he is, what he is. Uh, the thing, you know, the positive things he's done and the maybe not so good things he's done. I think that might be restricted to members only now because I think I was, I think I was a bit hungover, but it is still on this, on this, on this channel. Um, it wasn't very exciting to be honest with you, uh, but it was just a little conversation talking about who he was, etc. And you know, guys, we can uh, say, oh, this guy's got no experience, you know, blah blah blah. But how many people really? knew what Michael Edwards would do or Julian Ward. You know, did, did, you know, did, did we really know what, what these guys were going to do? So if we only ever took the attitude of we've got to have someone experienced, you know what I mean? Here we go, for example. Uh, right, okay, let me rewind. If we only take the attitude we've got to be someone experienced, then you would never progress. Nobody would ever progress their careers or anything. Roy Hodgson had one of the most decorated, you know, CVs in terms of experience as a coach, as a manager. Um, but it doesn't mean that he's a fantastic manager of what we expect at Liverpool Football Club. Um, you know, I was going to make, make reference to Brendan Rodgers. He had nothing on his CV. He, he did come to Liverpool uh, and he did all right. Do you know what I mean? He worked great. But what I mean is I think that sometimes someone just deserves a break. You know, for Brendan, I think that job came too soon anyway. And I think he was an easy option for FSG. You know, like he, someone like Dalglish or Rafa, they would be very powerful with the fan base. Rodgers was like, he was never going to stand up to the owners, was he? And say, have you seen my CV? Have you seen what I've done? You know, so, uh, you know, whereas Dalglish was, he had the back, you know, the fans, you, you were Kenny and, you know, there'll be Elon. Uh, they wouldn't have touched Rafa because I think he was the same sort of, Caliber as Dalglish, if you like. Now, the only thing that concerns me a little bit, and where I think there are question marks surrounding this appointment, is so. First of all, I'm you know I don't want to like slate anyone and write them off. And this this guy could be amazing. Okay, we do not know. Hindsight is amazing. Yeah, but he could be terrible. We just don't know. But we give the guy a chance, surely. All right. Um, but what I find a little bit concerning is that it sounds like the primary candidates for this position rejected us. I can't remember the name. I think it was Stein, Steinton or something like that. The article's on the front page of coxalt.com uh, and it's also on the member's website. And it, it was from about 10 days ago, I think, or something like that. No, maybe a week ago, maybe not even 10 days ago. And, I, and it said that he was the, the first choice for FSG and that he would make his decision at last weekend. That's what it said in the article, but that another weekend has passed. So two weekends ago, I think. And it, and it also said in the article, it explained why he was first choice. And in that article, it also said that there was two candidates for the job and he was one of them. And FSG were waiting for a decision from him. It sounds like two weekends ago, he made that decision. And, and rejected us. Sounds like there is absolutely nothing to to back this up. It's purely speculative. And it sounds like this other guy is now being offered it, right? And if that is true, right, why 
would you turn down Liverpool Football Club? For me, my opinion, and it's only that, is if you're a sporting director, you want stability. You know, imagine saying to someone at a job interview, so I, what money will, will our finances? Well, we really don't know because, as you know, the club which is currently exploring, you know, possibly invest, possible investment or even a potential outright sale. So we're not, we can't really say what the, the situation is going to be in a couple of years. What we can say is this is what we've got for this summer and that's going to be business as usual. But definitively, I can't tell you, you know, you're joining, I can't tell you uh, what would happen next year, where we're going to be. All oh, right, okay. And you, are you going to be, what, what's your intentions with the club? Well, to be honest with you, we don't know at the moment. <laughs> Fucking hell, that sure did that the other day on a video. Do you remember? That was, um, it's like a, a pull down screen between the glass and the shutter, which uh, stops mosquitoes going in. It just shot up. Oh, uh, God. It, when I'm sat with my back to it and that happens, I shit myself. Uh, so are you going to be here as us? Well, we don't know. So I just think that, you know, I don't think I would want to take a job offer from anyone that said, we don't know if we're going to be here. Because that job spotting director is not just something that you do for uh, a short period, which is why I found the claims really strange that this guy was apparently going to take it as an external transfer consultant, temporary, you know. And... You know, sporting director what surely says what is the next three to five years like minimum. I mean, like surely five years. Uh, and if you're if these people are going well, we don't know. You know, I'm not really sure I want to take the job. If you've got rep, if you've got reputation, you know, if you're one of the big guns in in football, uh, and the one that the primary target that Liverpool were after apparently was wanted by Monaco at one point and also Chelsea, you know, and, and other clubs. So this guy, I ain't seen him linked with anybody, right? Uh, and it, fuck, oh, I hate flies. That's probably because that shut has been open. Um, fuck off, you skanky fucking. Honestly, this the worst thing in the world for me. You know, like everyone's got that one thing they can't stand. Well, bullies. I don't like bullies, but flies. Oh, God, honestly. Fucking hate them. Um, it's, sorry, I, I can't remember where I was because of that fucking skanky thing. Um, I just feel that this guy, they've gone, do you want it? And he's gone, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, well, we can't guarantee, oh, I don't mind, I'll give it a go. Because it's a big, big step up for him. Uh, but who knows? And, and I, I, I do think, even if he gets offered, you know, a three-year contract or whatever, I think there's some truth in the suggestions that came from Germany that this was temporary. That's not just come from anywhere, and it's a really strange thing to say. I mean, why would you appoint a sporting director on a temporary basis, right? You know, straight away people are going to think, ooh, maybe they're not going to be around. And we discussed this on the stream, you know. Do you appoint a, you know, a really, like, top CEO if you've got no intentions of being there? Maybe you do, because the new owners might keep them. I don't know. Uh, not CEO, sporting director. Um, there's all sorts of different ways you can look at it. But I think if they, if this guy takes this position full time, well, well not full time, permanently on a, on a three year contract or whatever, I think there is going to be some kind of get out in there, some ter some some terms, conditions, uh, clause that Liverpool can dismiss him, uh, maybe without severance or something. Because I find it very strange that these reports, you know, came out saying it, oh, it, it would be on a temporary basis. Yet, if he's appointed on a three-year deal, for example, or a long-term permanent contract, that contradicts that, right? And then we all go, oh, they were lying. I don't, I don't necessarily think those people that made those claims were lying. I think that someone's got a whiff of something somewhere that said, well, he's, he's not really, you know, like there's, there's get out, basically. There's a get out option here. And it does, I think it, this appointment, in my opinion, this is my opinion, this isn't based on chatter or anyone I trust, in my opinion, I think that it does leave the door open for a potential club sale, and I'm not trying to delude myself. I, I, I have, you know, no hope at the moment at all that we're going to see that. Um, but I have opinions, and when I'm walking around by myself with a dog and I'm thinking about Liverpool, I, I currently think it wouldn't surprise me if something did come out. I still think that they're monitoring Manchester United situation. Uh, and I still think that there is an element of these new deals to do with the Premier League streaming service that would come after the next 
TV uh, negotiations. Um, I, I, I know that everyone's given up on, on the takeover, uh, or a poss not the takeover, a possibility of a takeover. Um, but, you know, there's a, there's, an op there's a chance, I think. I think FSG, if they do not secure some kind of investment or, you know, potential full sale, I think they're looking at the summer and are thinking, right, if Bellingham doesn't happen, which nobody expects it to, um, we got away with the Bellingham thing. They've accepted it, right? And we've managed to get these two or three really good players in. So that'll keep them fuckers quiet for a while. That gives, if they can get through the summer without any real criticism and the fans are convinced that what's happened is good, so look out for PR and all that this summer, then I think FSG say, we don't have to rush, we can take our time which I, I think they're doing that anyway. But what I mean by that is then they can say, well, we can hang around quite a bit longer, actually, and see what happens with these other marketing opportunities. I personally, as an ordinary man, and what I mean by that is as a peasant with someone in life that just gets by and just wants to pay his bills or whatever, I don't understand the greed element of it, but I'm not a billionaire. And I guess that's why billionaires are billionaires, because... They have to have, uh, you know, they have to be ruthless. They have to be greedy, uh, I think. Uh, I, I can't get my head around, like, <laughs> you can have three billion or four billion. Like, to me, they're both the same. I know they're not, but you know what I mean? Like, that amount of money is just, like, is is you could change a lot, not only in your life, but the lives of everyone and society around you and stuff. And... So I don't understand what the end game is for FSG. So I, I don't understand it. And I think that's one of the things you guys have got to think, uh, you know, and maybe you should chew that over what I'm saying before commenting about what you think about their, you know, what is their objective? I mean, if you think about it, the, the, the secure a bottom of the barrel deal, as it was called at the time by Liverpool officials, they pay pittance for the club, they have, they you know would walk away with the biggest return on anything that, do you know what I mean? That they, they, they've made so much money, and I don't begrudge that. I know there's people out there that do begrudge that. I don't begrudge it. I think well, they took the risk. They put the money in. Fair fucking play, you know. But with that, well, I'm not going to go into big debate about whether they're good owners or not. You know my views on that. But I don't see what the end game is like. If I was, if it was me, I might think, well, my kids, you know, I'll, I'll pass this business down to my children and, and they're going to have a good life and their children. But I already think if I'm a billionaire, they're going to be all right. So I don't get why you would push and push and push and push and push. You know, we're constantly told that they haven't taken money out of the club, although some people try to claim there are ways, they, ways that they have exploited to take money out of the club. It's just in the wording of the loans and the way things have been financed or whatever. That's a, a completely, uh, a completely different subject. You know that I am not educated enough on finances because I'm a football fan. I'm not a businessman. I'm I'm just a football fan, and I struggle to juggle my own finances. Do you know what I mean? So I I I don't understand it all. I'll be honest with you, and. So when do they actually benefit? They benefit, right, when they exit with this huge amount of money. But I just don't understand why people keep doing this and doing this and doing this. I don't, I don't get it. And at a particular age. I mean, I'm not being funny, but John's not exactly, you know, spring chicken, is he? And I'm not hating on him. I'm just telling a fact, you know. I don't know. I, I, I just... I just, I just find, I, I don't know. So, and the reason I'm mentioning all this is because you guys all assume that the the ownership situation is dead. I don't assume that. While I'm not sat here thinking, oh, it's going to happen sometime soon, I'm not, you know, thinking it's dead. I, I, I just because you have to think of these these questions, like what is the the long term objective? If they if they can walk away with million, billions, sorry, is it? Do they really want to double that potential figure and leave leaving three years from now? I don't know. 
and, and, and that's why it's important that you guys leave your comments and thoughts about this. Because sometimes you guys leave comments and I go, yeah, I never thought of that. Do you know what I mean? So, I, I find the sporting director this appointment extremely strange. I, I've got to be honest, and I'm not hating on the guy, and I hope he's a huge success, and it would be brilliant if he comes into a club like Liverpool that he's never worked at a big club like that before, and it succeeds. You know, there's people saying, oh, it's, it's, it's one of Raff, not Raffers, one of uh, Jürgen's appointments, one of his pals. Yeah, I've seen commentators, you know, on German football say they shared a room once or something, or, you know, they hardly know it. I mean, people are having to dig, like, really old pictures out to try and show them as being associated together. I know, they're both German, they've got to be friends, they're both working football. You know, um, there is a connection there, but just because you know someone doesn't mean that it's... I don't know, it's extreme. It's ex it's extremely strange. And don't forget, you know, that Klopp said, didn't he, a couple of weeks ago, like, oh, yeah, there was really good, you know, talks with the sporting director. Uh, everything's going really well. If he does get appointed, right, if he does get confirmed, which it sounds like he has accepted the position, uh, then we look forward to Jürgen's next press conference because hopefully one of the hacks will say, tell us about him. You know? And then if Jürgen gushes with stuff, then great. But don't, just because the manager sits there and gushes with stuff, think, oh, right, okay. You need to look at it and think, is he being sincere here? You know, or is he just saying, yeah, he's a really good guy. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, I've got trust in him, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, is he following the the positivity of this appointment in a, in a perfectly normal way? Or is he like, oh, I've known him for years, man. You know, he's great. There's a difference. Like, you need to look and see if there's real enthusiasm in what he's saying about this appointment. Or whether he's just going, yeah, it's, it's good. It's going to be a really good asset for Liverpool Football Club. Is he following the hymn sheet? Or is he genuinely like, oh, no, this is this is who I wanted, you know? So if this guy takes the position, it sounds like he's going to. Good luck to him. I find it extremely bizarre. I'm concerned that we've been rejected by other really experienced sporting directors, which you would assume a club of our size would go for. Um, but again, we can't, you know, we can't actually prove that that is the case. You know, we can't prove it. But it, it seems exceptionally strange that I see some sporting directors moving around Europe, different clubs, big clubs, and they're like, yeah, we want we want to do that. It just feels like they're not excited about Liverpool. But there is no basis for me to say that. I, I, I'm speculating, guys. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? So if he does come in, which it looks like he's going to, then good luck to the chap. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, could, I could reel off loads of negatives about this man if I wanted to try and poke fun at him and belittle him. But equally, if I wanted to big him up and convince you he's the best thing since sliced bread, I could find quite a, a few positives. It's all irre irrelevant, really, because what you've done somewhere else doesn't mean you'll do it at Liverpool. He could do worse, he could do better. Um, it, it, it's, it smells like an FSG appointment. To me, it doesn't smell like a Jurgen Klopp appointment. But that doesn't mean that Jurgen hasn't given it his blessing. You know... We all have a knowledge to a certain extent of, you know, certain players in the English game, for example, and many of us will have opinion if we were asked and go, well, yeah, they'd do a job, they'd do all right. Some of us think one player is better than another or not as good. We've all got a little bit of knowledge. So Jürgen's going to know about this guy, you know? But when I did the stream the other day on him and we were reading up on him about, you know, all the facts and his CV and everything... I wasn't left thinking, ooh, this sounds really promising. And don't forget FSG, they know as much as me and you. So they'd have done the exact same research. They'd have gone, well, we see, what does he do? You know, so why, as an owner, why would you be like, oh, all right, then, yeah, let's give it to him then. You know, why did they decide to appoint this man? If they were going to exit at some point, maybe they went, don't give a fuck, you know, just do the job, it's not our problem, is it? You know, because if you were ambitious, like I don't, I don't know, is it just bias? I'd be like, no, I want the best. Like, I mean, I'm like that in my life. I don't know what you guys are like, but I want the best. I won't overpay for the best. I'll try and get the best monitor I can get. I look at the reviews. I look at the experience. I look at the brand. Right? If I can find the same monitor for hundred pound cheaper, 
I might go for it, but it depends what the reviews are and whether it'll last as long as I want it to. Do you know what I mean? But I'm not going to get ripped off, but I'm going to try and get the best. And I'm like that in life with everything I do, everything I purchase, anything. You try and buy value, right? I want the best. There's no way in the world I'd go where it'll do, because that's just not my personality. Like that with the girls as well, you know what I'm saying? Um, depends how desperate I am. But, you know, it's it's a very strange appointment, but it, you know, it comes with my blessing, you know, I'll give the guy a chance. Um, I, I'm, I'm just, I hate to do it and I hate to say it, but I just feel like it is related to the future of the club, the uncertainty of the club, possibly relating to, uh, you know, a potential club sale. It doesn't mean that they're like, oh, we're going to definitely sell, you know, so don't, I don't want to put you down that route. But I do think the uncertainty of them maybe not being around, because they probably don't know what they're going to do at the moment. I think that has contributed to this appointment. Uh, but we'll have to see. I personally now just want to get it confirmed. That's one issue resolved, if so. And then we look forward to the press conference and see what Jürgen's got to say. But when you see him speaking, just say, is he just following the him sheet here saying, yeah, this is good, you know. You know, or is he like gushing with enthusiasm? Okay, guys, I've got to go. Uh, thanks to my uh, my channel subscribers, channel you people that support the channel. Thanks to all of you. Thank you. Listen, you don't have to be a channel member to support my channel, right? If you watch, if you if you take the time to comment, you're making this this a really good community, right? A thumbs up is always nice. You know, it's just it's nice to know that people are there. You know, you're supporting the channel. Uh, if you're in a position to hit the super thanks button or whatever it's called, that little love app, brilliant. That's really nice. It buys me a drink, something like that. I love that. It's my new favourite feature. Um, I need to update the list of people underneath my video description. And again, if you want to join the Telegram chat room, our Liverpool FC chat, uh, which you can use on any device, laptop, mobile phone, whatever, fucking desktop, laptops, tablets, go to t.me forward slash cop talk chat. Uh, but you then need to email me dunk at coptalk.com, D-U-N-K at coptalk.com to tell me what name you've you know, requested access from and then link me to one of your social media profiles if you have one, just so I can verify that you're a real person uh, and not a bot, all right? Because we, we, we get people that try to disrupt. We've had Man United fans come in there before, try and disrupt things. And uh, we had one of my years from like nearly 20 years ago come in the other day, uh, which is... Uh, which is crazy really but um you know the people got to do what they got to do we do have moderators in there all the time so one when the odd one you know weirdo or whatever slips through the net that's fine you know they get dealt with uh and um it's not a big deal but we we you know if you want to join that uh the chat room which i would highly recommend um which you know there's no benefit in it for me really i mean it's just nice to have you guys from the comments in there talking that's it and there's a lot of information being shared in there um I'll be honest, a lot of it's a load of nonsense because it's like, oh, have you seen what's being claimed here and stuff like that? So it's not like the members' website or anything, but um, the people in there are, are really, really good people. And, um, you know, I'm on there all the time. So uh, and one final thing, I'm going to go to uh, to England at the weekend to see my son, Rob. Obviously, his grand died the other week, but this was pre-arranged before then. So, it, you know, I need to try and do the dad bit with him. We're going to go and see Post Malone next weekend. So I'm really looking forward to that. But if you could subscribe to my other YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Duncan Oldham, O-L-D-H-A-M, it would be greatly appreciated because I think I'm, I might do some vids when I'm there on that. I don't know. I'm not really sure. I don't know if I'll have the time and if Rob's going to be in the mood for it. Um, but if you want to follow my uh, my trip to England, YouTube, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Duncan Oldham is the username on all three. I would really appreciate a follow because... You know, like for me, I'm not bothered about numbers and things like that. That That's absolutely irrelevant to me. Um, for me, it's about I want the people that appreciate my content to be a part of my life. Does that make sense? And away from the football. And we might never meet and you might only be a username, but you, you, you know, and I, I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys, I'm going to go. I've got lots to do. I will speak to you later. Please do let me know what you think about this chat. And if you found anything about out about this chat, like tell people in the comments what you know about this guy, the good and the bad, because some people won't know. They won't know. 
and I haven't got all day to go, to put all this information in there. So, you know, if you've seen something about this chap, don't assume that everybody knows, right? Drop it in there. So if you're watching this video now, my advice would be to come back later and check the comments again, because you might learn a little about a little bit about this guy if you were even interested, you know? Are you underwhelmed? Are you excited about this? Um, be cautious of what the, the, the clique of journalists say, because I'm sure they're going to want to portray it as a very positive thing. Uh, but don't just hate on this guy because he doesn't have uh, a particularly good CV. He's never worked in a position like this. Because if we'd have took that attitude with transfers over the years, think of all the greats that have played for Liverpool that would never have been given a chance, you know? Um, but are you like me where you think this is a, it's just a little bit strange? Like, you know, first thing I thought when this came out was this is just fucking Liverpool, isn't it? This is what we do. Um, but it could turn out to be amazing. But I do think that there is a possibility that even if he gets this three-year contract or a long-term contract, I still think there's going to be something in that that enables Liverpool to push. I mean, Liverpool can push anyone, but with, maybe without penalty, because I found it very strange that those, those claims came out from Germany. All right, guys, speak to you in a bit. All right.